Hello and welcome to part 4 of the crate modeling tutorial. Um, in this crate we're going to be looking specifically at packing UVs uh, and rendering those UVs out. Now the first thing I really want to or, or, or talk about is the UV editor. Now for those of you who started off in Maya 2017 or a previous version of Maya, um, you'll notice that this grid kind of looks almost exactly the same as it used to except it's got more than one box here. Now Maya 2017 Update 3 had a massive overhaul to a lot of the UV editor tools. And the default range and the range we need to be using is 0 to 1. So all of our UVs need to be able to fit in this grid. But this can be misleading when you've got four quadrants here and each quadrant's got 10 boxes um, or 100 boxes. Um, luckily we can change this and this is actually the first thing that we're going to be doing. Um, otherwise what happens is that even if you've got more than one of these grades showing if you're awake, if you're not awake, you're gonna you're gonna end up putting the UV uh, in the wrong in the wrong part, which I did in the original video, um, which is why everything went wrong. Now, in order to change this, we need to change the grid settings. Now, if we come to view, you'll notice that we have an option called grid here. It's ticked. If we untick it, obviously the grid totally disappears, and that's no use at all. But if we if we look to the right here, you'll notice we have a box. I'm gonna click on this. Now, when I do that, I get the UV editor grid options, and length and width is set to 10. I'm going to remove this and change it to 1. Now when I, when I do this, nothing massively important happens, but when I click apply, you'll notice that that grid now is 4 quadrants. And it's much easier to see that this here, in the top right hand corner, is the quadrant we want to use. Um, not 1 to 2 or 1 to 10. We want to make sure that we're using 0 here to 1. So later on in the UV editor we're going to be looking at rendering and it's going to be talking about UV range. We want to make sure that we are 0 uh, to 1. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the object that we unwrapped in the previous video. Now, packing UVs is kind of a, a two-step process. The first step that we need to kind of go through is making sure that each of the UVs are taking up the right amount of space, as in each of these islands. Now, it's quite difficult for me to be able to demonstrate without using any materials. Um, that these slats are far bigger than they need to be. But in order for us to understand that, we have to be able to understand what resolution is all about. Now the best way of thinking about um, that the UV render um, is that the, the more space we take up, um, the better. The more pixels that we're using for actual texture, the better quality of those materials will be, certainly at lower resolutions. If you're working on a mobile game or you're trying to work on something that's very low detail, quite stylized, um, you need to be really optimized with your UV kind of workflow. Um, and we can demonstrate how much space each one of these, or how many pixels each one of these shells will take up by using a checker pattern that is part of the UV editor. Now at the top of the UV editor you'll notice that we have this little checker map here. Um, and this will apply the checker map to the object. So I'm just going to left click this now. Now as I do this, I'm going to be having a look uh, at the crate. And what we notice is that the squares on the crate are bigger than the squares in the slats. Now this essentially means that there's going to be more detail in some of these slats than there will be, for instance, in one of these sections of crate. And what we want to do is you want to scale these down um, in UV um, until these squares are roughly the same. Now that can be quite tough in the UV editor whilst you've got this object selected, this display image, if we turn that off the checker will only show in the viewport and we can actually see the UVs again. So as we move this you'll notice that the, uh, the material moves here and the same thing happens if we rotate and scale. So if I press R in the UV editor I can scale these and you'll notice that those boxes get bigger and smaller. What I don't want us to do is scale in the viewport. You'll notice that makes absolutely no difference at all to the material size. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scale these down and make them smaller until the boxes are roughly the same shape. They don't have to be perfect, but they certainly have to be better than they were. Um, one of the other problems that we find if the, if, the, if the boxes or the resolution has a massive difference is if we've got loads of small details or we've got a hand-painted wood material, especially if we have a hand-painted wood material that we've applied to both the slat and also the crate, um, if you've got lots of little kind of like highlight sections um, you might end up with those highlights being much sharper on the slats than they are on the crate and then you end up with the problem you've got kind of like a a resolution mismatch. So something like this is fine. 
this isn't a problem. Anything like this is fine. Now, in the previous video, we spoke a little bit about stacking UVs, and I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you like, to, uh, to, to move these UVs off of each other. Now, I'm going to keep them as they are, but if you want to have separate materials for each one of your slats, all you need to do is use the UV shell selection type to drag these off and position them in a way that makes it much easier to texture, or in a way that makes it easier to texture. And what I mean by that is try and kind of group them up. Okay, what what you shouldn't really do is something like this. Okay, this just doesn't really make sense. So you want to try and keep them together if we can. Now this brings me to my next point about spacing around UVs. This is a question I get quite often, and people want to know why can't I? If I can stack a UV like so, why why can't I have them right next to each other? Why can't I have them taking up almost the same space here? Why is this wrong? Well, the answer really is it lies in the fact that we've separated the UVs to begin with. If they are all going to have the same material, and we know that, if all the slats are going to have the same material um, and they need to have the same material, having them separate makes no sense. Okay, So they should all be stacked. If all the materials are going to be the same, and they should all be the same, and everybody is happy with that, they should be stacked, but they're separated, and this this tells me that you want to have a different material on each one, potentially even a, a physical, a, a, a different physical material. So this one could be plastic, this one could be wood, this one could be metal, this one could be concrete. There could be a whole host of things. Now, if we move these close together and we zoom in, there is a small gap. Um, if we kind of overlap half of them, the problem that we're going to get is where the overlap is. We're going to be sharing a material. We also have the other issue of something called a pixel bleed. Um, and this can happen in third party programs like Substance Painter. It can also happen when applying um, texture maps that have been created in Photoshop. Nearly always we have to have the material in Photoshop take up slightly more than the actual UV shell itself. If we go within these white lines, what we end up having is a, is, a, is a halo, essentially, around the 3D object. So we want to make sure that we have a decent gap between each of these shells, because if we apply material and there is a pixel bleed, or we've baked a material in substance and we've, you know, we, we're applying that material, you might find that it, kind of, it overlaps onto the other shapes, or even onto the crate. So if you are going to have them separate, separate them like this because this actually makes it much easier for you to texture them separately because they're closer together. Um, and also as well, it makes it easier for you to be able to compare their likeness. Um, they should all look very different. If they're not going to look different, then they need to remain stacked. So I'm just going to stack all these back up again just by spamming my Control Z button. Hopefully I've got enough unwraps. If I haven't, I'm going it perfect. I had enough undos. So if you've got this section, that's fine. If you have them all laid out, that's also fine. But what we want to do is you want to hold right click, select UV shell, if we haven't already, and I want to drag all of those UV islands. And what we're looking for is for this to fit really nicely with as little wasted space as possible in this 0 to 1 range. It's very important that we fit in 0 to 1. If we render outside of 0 to 1 and we create a material, um, and we apply that, it's not going to apply properly. So that's why it's really important. Even if it's unwrapped properly, it's not going to apply properly. Now, the same rules apply in the grid as they do to each individual UV shell. We need to make sure that we're using as much space as possible, but we do not want to go outside of this black line. If we go outside of this line, or this bottom line here, we can probably actually come down a bit there. Um, it's not going to be rendered. And we want to we want to waste as little space as possible, okay. And this is essentially packing. Now, some of you might be asking, but why why did we move? Why did we rotate? Why did we scale? Why did we do all of those things with all of the objects selected? And I'm hoping that this is obvious. But we we spent a little bit of time earlier scaling down the slats so that they took up roughly the same uh, amount of UV space um, as the crates did as these individual sections did, that these take up the same amount of UV space as they do in real world, otherwise we end up with a massive texture mismatch, blah 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 blah. Um, we went through this earlier. Um, but if I select them and scale them separately, you'll notice that I essentially undo all of the work I did earlier. So that's why when we select them and we scale them, um, it makes sense to do them together. 
because we're scaling them uniformly we're keeping those aspect ratios correct and we don't have to keep messing around with the sizing so we're going to position this as perfectly as we can it's only a crate so a lot of you will be thinking why go into this much effort um, but this is just kind of a practice for a bigger object later in the future now some of you who are familiar with Maya might be saying but Rob there's a lout or why on God's earth are you, you, you manually doing this well it's good practice first and foremost um, if you want to use the lout tool um, and you've got UVs all over the place just select the UVs you want to pack come to modify and then come to layout and you'll notice that it will lay them out for you but it is well worth knowing that, that it doesn't necessarily without configuration do a massively optimized job and if you want to keep these UVs stacked you have to tell it to keep the UVs stacked and by the time you've done that it's actually just easier to position the UV shell yourself so that's it, the UV shell is packed, we're happy with it, we can now get rid of checker the last step is to render this UV, now we can do this by coming to image and by coming to UV snapshot this is going to open up another menu now within here um, you guys are going to have some some interesting defaults if I remember correctly your default here is 256 by 256 and this deals with your resolution so when we render out a UV at a resolution um, the lower the resolution the less detail we can see the bigger the resolution the more detail we can see um, as a general rule of thumb um, we want to be rendering out at a resolution that we're going to be producing the texture at um, because this, this, this reduces the chance of us being able to um, create a material that doesn't fit properly um, if, we, if we took that 256 by 256 uh, render and we scaled it up to say 4k um, you can imagine that we just essentially end up with some boxes we don't really it becomes very tough to see what we're doing so render this out at the same resolution of the texture you want to create um, because this just makes sure that in the first instance when you're in Photoshop that you're going to be able to create a material that actually fits properly you're not going to have to keep bouncing backwards and forwards now in this instance in preparation for part 5 we're going to be using 512 by 512 but if you've never used Photoshop before and you kind of want an easier ride then feel free to, to have this at 1024 by 1024 this will give you more pixels to play around with there's more room for error um, and also as well your material won't you know there's very little chance of it looking blurry but I'm going to keep mine at 512 by 512 the other thing we need to know about resolution is that these need to be powers of 2 um, but they don't have to be the same power of two. So occasionally when you're looking online, you're doing some research, you're looking at other UV tutorials, you'll see that these guys, somebody's got 512 by 1024 or 1024 by 512. This is absolutely fine. There's, there's no problem with this. Um, you might find that some objects lend themselves to having um, slightly longer UV maps as opposed to the same height and width. These things can include stuff like guns, swords, those kinds of things where, where you've got a long blade for instance we want to try and avoid using any diagonal placement because of course if we have diagonal placement we don't get nice straight edges we end up if we zoomed in really really closely we'd end up as you can almost see here we end up with these kind of this staggered this kind of staggered pixelation of the material which means that you always have to use more space than you need which is why it is important when we're packing the UVs we try and keep everything flat and straight you are going to have some objects like spheres and cylinders where you can't do that um, but where possible we need to make sure that we keep everything flat so the next thing I want to talk about is the image format now your default is Maya IFF but it's worth noting once you've changed this for the most part it will remember your, your selection now Windows sees Maya IFF as an audio file I have no idea why, maybe somebody can let me know in the comments below um, but what we are going to be doing is changing this to BMP now you can use, in, a, in actual fact you can use any one of the image formats it doesn't matter which one you use I tend to use BMP for the simple reason that I, certainly with hand painted materials I'll paint straight on top of the UV in a new layer and this just means that I then don't have to create a new a, like a new canvas and paste the UVs in make them fit and things like that it just again it just it makes it a little bit easier to follow along from a tutorial point of view but once you're confident feel free to save this out as a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF if you're, if you're mental um, I wouldn't do this however now let's have a look at UV range options the default is 0 to 1 and in nearly all cases we should keep 
the default as 0 to 1. Now this deals specifically with this grid here. You notice as we zoom out you can see some numbers. We have 0 in the middle and we have 1 at each of the extremities. And this is minus 1, this one is also minus 1, and this is plus 1, and this is plus 1. This quadrant here is our, is our default unwrap location. Later on when you've got different texture sets you can render them out in different areas. Um, we're not going to be going into that. For the most part we're just going to be using this quadrant in the top right hand corner. Um, but this is the 0 to 1 range. So when we look at this and we look at 0 to 1 that's what it refers to. Entire range basically means everything. So 0 to whatever number we've got on the grid will be rendered. Um, in the previous video this is a mistake that I made. I had 0 to 2 enabled instead of 0 to 1 which is why I've redone them. Um, learn from my mistakes it's a pain in the backside to have to redo and unwrap because of this um, if you make this mistake don't panic all you have to do is scale the UVs down so they fit into 0 to 1 um, unless you're recording and then in which case it, 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 it fucks you up so we have UV snapshots um, we're going to keep this at 0 to 1 now the last thing that we need to be able to change is this option here now this is this deals with the basic um, file location now I've got a file for you guys here, tutorials, here it is, um, and I'm going to call this crate underscore, oh Christ, crate underscore UVW, in fact actually, it would probably be better if I put it in the, uh, the thing. Now I've already got one here because as I said I screwed up previously. Um, so crate underscore UV is fine, crate underscore unwrap is also fine, crate underscore UVW, that's fine. You can call it crate underscore I hate unwrapping. As long as you know what that is, that's fine. You can, if you want, just call it crate. But later on when we've got different material types, you might find it tough to distinguish between them. So make sure that crate underscore a name is used. This just makes it easier for you to kind of pick the files out quickly. So I'm going to click save. In this instance, it's going to ask me if I want to replace it and deafen you at the same time. And that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is click OK. Again, it's going to ask me if we want to uh, overwrite the file. The answer is yes. And that's it. So I'm just going to navigate now to that file off screen, obviously, so you can't see all my downloaded shit. And I'm going to open this up in photos. And this is what we should end up with. OK. Um, now, this we can take into Photoshop. We can paint on this. Um, we can do all kinds of stuff with this. Um, I hope you found this video more useful than the last one um, <laughs> because we've packed it properly this time. Um, and just, just bear in mind that every time Maya does an update, um, make sure that you read the update notes thoroughly because you have no idea what they've changed until you, uh, you try and use it and it's not there. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.